Let me tell you a little bit more in detail about the different types of pike flies and not least their history. Uh, because as it turns out, pike on rod and line is definitely not a new sport. And I have with me some uh, hard evidence for that. This is in fact an archaeological find, which is why I'm wearing these white gloves. And we have been lucky enough to borrow this from the museum in Heatherslew. And what I have with me is in fact a pike leader that is archaeologically dated to the 13th, 14th century AD. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's actually a wire leader with a small barbless double hook on it. So even uh, seven or 800 years ago, pike fishermen knew that they had to protect their line from the sharp teeth of the pike. This leader could easily have been used in a historical bog like this one where we're sitting now. Later on in the golden era of fly fishing in England, in the 1800s, pike fly fishing was also a common and accepted sport. And in that period, they would have used flies like this one. This one I tied uh, from a pattern that was actually used in the 1800s. It's tied uh, on an 8 odd salmon hook, so it's, it's quite a big and heavy fly. And of course, using lots of materials and colors just as we do now. In Scandinavia, pike on the fly as a sport didn't really start to grow until the 1990s, where Morten Valeur popularized this fly, which is basically just a, a big flash streamer, uh, made entirely of soft flashaboo spun in dubbing loops, and it's still a very good and very popular fly type. The more modern style of uh, hook flies for pike now combines different types of synthetic fibers and flash and these plastic heads where you can glue eyes on. And that of course gives you a whole range of possibilities in both imitation and provocation. One of the latest developments in pike flies is of course the introduction of tube flies, which are very popular in all sorts of fly fishing. Uh, here's one in the style of uh, Niklas Bauer and Daniel D. Holm, which allows you to tie really big flies with a lot of volume that are still lightweight and relatively easy to cast on a 7 or 8 weight outfit. These flies are extremely lively in the water with these long flowing saddle hackles and very long pieces of flesh and synthetic fibers, so they really undulate and move in the water. Any normal cheap lure box is actually very good for keeping your pike flies in, both for storage and for fishing. I like these uh, ventilated boxes because they allow the flies to, to drain and, and dry, but apart from that, any lure box is actually very good. In this box I have my poppers, which I think is my favorite kind of fly fishing for pike. There are basically three types of poppers. There's this the gurgler type, which is made of two or three layers of foam, just folded over the fly. Then there's a, a more normal flathead popper, which creates a lot of commotion and disturbance uh, in the surface. And then there's the more standard diver type, with a, with a tapered head towards the hook eye, which doesn't create as much commotion, but more slides and dives along the surface. These modern surface flies are cheap and easy to tie using, uh, like this one, uh, craft foam or, or these pre-formed foam popper heads. Before that, we had to use something like this, which is stacked and clipped uh, deer hair, which does float the fly. Uh, but of course it's very time consuming to tie. But it also does give you some creative possibilities to tie something like this little fish imitation. Both of these flies are exceptionally well tied and are tied by Søren Flaub. 
these are not standard fishing flies, but shows the creative possibilities that you have with stacking deer hair. I don't use uh, stinger hooks on my flies because I've often found that they end up hooking the pike very deep. And in order to make it easy to release the pike, I always fish barbless hooks. And when the pike is hooked in the outside of the mouth, this tool is actually very good for releasing them. You simply slide the leader through the slot here and then you push it down towards the fly where it catches the hook bend and with a simple twitch you release the pike. This tool is only good when the pike is hooked in the outside of the mouth. When it's hooked deeper, a pair of long nose pliers is the very best tool for removing the fly and they're also very handy to mash down the barb of the fly or to cut wire here on the inside of the pliers. Even though I tie all my hook flies on long shank hooks like this one, there are two good reasons for tying the flies on the back part of the hook like this one. The first is that it gives you much less fouling on the hook like this and the second one is that it's much easier to release the pike simply by grabbing this naked part of the hook shank with your pliers.